Hey, what up, fellas? So I am a fan of popping corks. When I first saw these guys, when I got into fishing, some saltwater fishing, I thought they looked pretty freaking dumb. I would have rather just use a lure tied directly to my line. But popping cork works a lot differently than any other lure. Instead of covering water with it, uh, bringing the lure to the fish, the popping cork pretty much stays in one same spot and you just pop it. And what that pop does, it makes a lot of noise, it makes some splashing, and it kind of sounds like a fish that is feeding and that's gonna attract other fish towards it. Now, here's what we're gonna do. This is about your average drop for a popping cork, but I wanna bring it down. I am wanna bring it way down, a lot less drop. Maybe something like that right there. A lot of times when I'm using a popping cork, I'm always nervous that the bottom is gonna be in the grass. And even when I get one little piece of grass on the lure, I feel like I can't get bites on it. Another thing that happens with a popping cork is you'll be popping it on top and sometimes redfish will come and hit the actual cork. It feels like when the bait is all the way down here and the noise is all the way up here, the fish are just looking at the cork and they might not even be seeing the bait down here. But if that's way up here, they're gonna be able to see it a lot easier. So maybe you'll get more bites with that. Okay, don't use your teeth. Don't use your teeth to cut line. It's very bad. We're gonna bring that drop down a lot. Something like seven to eight inches. Now, something like that, I'm telling you, that looks super freaking stupid. But I th like I said, I think it can have its advantages as well. All right, fellas, we're out here and it's gonna be a foggy one. Put your predictions in now. How do you think the short drop popping cork is gonna go? Is it gonna catch some fish or is my other rod gonna catch everything for us? For sure, we're gonna catch some fish today though. Right guys, for sure, for sure, for sure, we're gonna catch them. Be hitting up a lot of different types of areas first off we're starting in this flat it's about three feet there's the guy we're starting off with look at that drop what is that like seven inches maybe eight inches you saw someone running that right there you would think they're the worst fisherman of all time and you know what they might be right we'll let to see all right mr cork got the doa shrimp on there interesting color it's like a coca-cola color question is how much should we pop it doesn't have very far to fall, so maybe popping it more is better because it will get to that bottom faster where it's going to be kind of looking dumb if it's just hanging straight down. We'll just have to try different things and see what works. 15, 20 casts with the popping cork and with a short drop. Now we're going to the control. No bites on the popping cork yet, so if we get bit on this, it's not looking good for the cork. Oh wow, that's that's bad. That's really bad. This might be a big trout, dude. That's really bad for the popping cork. First freaking cast. I think it's a, it's a red. Wow. First cast with the control. After like 15 casts with the popping cork. First cast with the control. Instant redfish. I mean, I'm happy to catch it, but it's not looking good for the popping cork short dropper. It's a little red. And usually if they're on the flat like this, like this flat, it's not just one, man. There might be a lot of these guys around. Whew. I mean, that's a really bad start for the popping cork, not gonna lie. That just, that kind of sucks out a lot of my confidence with it. We do have other, jeez, he's just diving under. Other spots where it may suit the popping cork better. You never know though, it could have just been luck. Dumb luck. Gotcha. Gotcha. I got gotcha, you, mate. Not a bad one. I got a terrible hook set on that guy, but still got him. Hey, look at that guy. It's a small fella, but it's still a fella. And he's going right back. Sometimes it has a lot of fish, but it pretty much, it's just a big flat, a little bit deeper flat. Well, so far on the deeper flat here, it's not looking good for the short drop popping cork. Made about 15, 20 casts with it, not even a nibble. Switch to the soft plastic down south lure right away. Redfish on the very first cast, but we're gonna keep on casting here. And a little bit later on, if we're not catching any fish here, we're gonna move on to different spots that may be better for that short drop popping cork. Oh, oh my God, dude, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. I'm pretty sure this is like my third cast with this hot plastic. <laughs> oh, fellas, 
but I don't know what to tell you. Oh my gosh, we just may have ruined the short drop popping corks life. There's a fish, dinker. Dinky dink, rinky dink, dinky dink. Oh yeah, baby, the LG Speckler. See you, my man. Shoot, he's the same size as the DOA. There's a fish, finally! Fish! 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 Is it possible? Is it actually possible? Oh my gosh. I'm losing my mind. Forgetting how to fight him. It's a redfish. Same size. Huh. Well, we are coming into some a shallower area. Where, man, he's got some shoulders on him for a little guy. Yeah, way shallower. This is where it should be good, to be honest with you. Because if you had a longer drop on it, it would be down there in the grass, which maybe not be the worst thing in the world, but for me, when I have a uh, bait sinking all the way to the grass, I always lose confidence. I feel like I'm getting weeds on the hook. Bang! There he is. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that looks stupid. I'm telling you, that looks stupid. Look how close he is to the cork. Another raggedy looking guy. He's got some shoulders on him. Right there in the mouth. All right, dude. Woo. Look at that. We made the drop even shorter. Uh, we're in a good area for the cork though, so let's see if it can actually do something. Oh, there's a guy. That's a trout. That's a big trout. Down south lure. Coming in with this big boy trout. Big boy trout, big boy trout. Big boy trout. Big trout, that's a big trout. That's a big trout right there. That's a trout. That's a trout. That's a trout, baby. Nice trout. <laughs> that's a tattered up looking redfish right there, boys. Man. What do you want me to tell you? Our hypo- Oh, shoot! Hypothesis on the short drop ain't looking good. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me, dude. Okay, it's a it's an ultra dink, but here again, we're on some deeper potholes. Probably 20 casts, 25 casts with the popping cork. Absolutely not even a nibble. Second cast with the soft plastic. And we catch this little guy. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really mean much. No one's getting out of bed to catch an LG like that, but it's kind of crazy. Just off the rip, get an Insta bite when you didn't even get a nibble on the short drop for 25 casts. The thing I'm struggling, the thing I'm struggling with with the popping cork, so I feel like I can't can't cover a lot of water with it when we're drifting. Of course it does attract fish from a larger area, but I feel like it can only really target like one pothole. On one tree with a soft plastic, you can cover multiple just by running through them. Check this out, fellas. We got our popping cork still tied, tied up right over there. I saw this popping cork floating. Decided to go pick it up. I got close to it and it took off. Now it's over there. <laughs> so there's a fish on there. We must save this fish and also get a free popping cork. What do you guys think? You thinking trout or red on this popping cork? I think he's running for me now. I see him up there. Perfect. Not really, but if he runs into it, which he might. Did we get him? We got him. We got him. There's gotta be a red, right? We got him, boys. We caught ourselves a fresh popping cork. It might be a keeper popping cork too. It's a drum. <laughs> it keeps changing. Little guy though. Well, we got ourselves. That's a nice popping cord too. It might be the same brand that I'm using. And we got ourselves a nice drum on it. Looks like he. He looks pretty good. So he probably wasn't on there too long. Look at that man. I've, I've seen some of these guys sticking their fins around. So they're definitely in the area. We'll let that guy go. 
and we got ourselves a, a naturally pretty nice popping cork for free. So as it turns out, there may be a reason why people do and do not do certain things. Now to be fair though, the conditions were pretty, pretty freaking bad to use a popping cork. First of all, we had super clear water. So it was very obvious that there was something pretty big above the lure. Popping cork really shines when it's a little bit murked up because it has a lot of noise to it compared to other lures. So it has a lot more attraction. And even when the water is kind of murky and you can't see very far. And also there wasn't very much wind. So the noise from this really stuck, stuck out like a sore thumb. We're using the DOA shrimp. I did try a couple different things, but with this DOA shrimp, it does have a weight in it and it reached the bottom of this very fast. And in the water, I thought it might kind of float like this, but it just hung straight down and looked pretty, pretty terrible. And that's what we learned from that underwater footage. But what you can do with these DOA shrimps, you can just take the weight out and I would probably just run zero weight on here. Honestly, I don't think I'm gonna be trying this again. I'm just gonna be using a normal drop if I'm gonna be using a popping cord. One more thing I do wanna mention, I do have a Patreon. I've had it for the last couple years. I don't really mention it, but last year, pretty rough year between uh, the freeze, truck repairs. So I figured why, is, why not mention it right now? First thing I will say is it's not worth your money, but if you wanna help me out and sign up, there are a few benefits to it. First up, I have weekly ish fishing reports, nothing super specific, just some stuff to give you an idea of what's happening in the area. Throughout Spoon, tutorial at the jetties just because a lot of people don't know how to use the three ounce spoon at the jetties and last up i have a spreadsheet that i've been keeping since 2018 uh, of all the fish that i've been seeing in the area by month for each year so just so something to give you an idea of what's possible to catch by month for uh each year since 2018 and I have updated it to be current all the way through 2021. That includes stuff like inshore, stuff from piers, stuff for surf fishing, uh, shark surf fishing, and uh, of course some jetty fishing as well. I love you guys very much. See you guys next time. Again, it's not worth your money, but if you wanna help me out, I appreciate it. See you.